Transistors like these revolutionized electronics. Computers, mobiles, and many other pieces of electronic equipment are full of thousands or even millions of transistors. Most of the billions of transistors produced yearly come within integrated circuits or ICs like these. However, many are still produced like this, individually packaged. Individually packaged transistors are known as discrete transistors. Discrete transistors come in different, different cases or packages. Here is a selection of different cases. This is a TO3 case, a TO92 case, a TO222 case, and an SO223 case or package. If you look on the front of the transistor, you'll be able to see a number code. This is the transistor's part number, and if you Google this, you can find the transistor's data sheet, and the data sheet, normally a PDF, will have details of how the transistor can be used. And be careful to look at the code, because sometimes different transistors can come in the same package, but that doesn't mean they can be used in the same way. Transistors can be used in one of two basic ways. The first way is as a switch. They can switch a current or component on and off. And the second is as an amplifier. They can take an input signal and make it much larger. Now the reason they're able to do this is because the input applied across one set of their terminals affects the input a larger input across the other set of terminals. Two major types of transistor you're likely to come across are these. The BJT, the bipolar junction transistor, such as this, and number two, the FET, or the field effect transistor such as this now BJT's have three terminals the base the collector and the emitter and you'll need to go to Google to the data sheet to find out which leg or which terminal is which and inputting current at the base of a BJT as in the current that flows between the base and the emitter terminals controls the current that flows between the collector and the emitter terminals. Be careful not to mix up the legs. FETs have three terminals, the gate, the source and the drain, although many also have a fourth terminal called the body. Applying voltage to the gate controls the current that flows between the source and the drain terminals. Transistors can also be classified according to the way semiconductor material inside them is arranged. With BJTs, we have NPN transistors and PNP transistors. Now the N stands for N layer and the P stands for P layer. The N layer is characterized by extra electrons. So the N for the negative charge of the electron. So electrons act as the main charge carrier in uh, N-layer material. Whereas with P-layer material, the main charge carrier are electron holes. And just to show you the actual symbol of each type of transistor is different. So here we have the collector, emitter and base. The arrows here. It's symbol for... Uh, NPN and the PNP of the collect collector, the emitter, and the base. The arrow there. And with FETs, we also have two different types. Remember, FETs are unipolar, they're not bipolar. So we have N channel, which looks like this. 
We have the drain, the source, and the gate. This is an N channel. And we have the P channel, which looks like this. The source, the drain, the gate, and of course, the arrow. So again, be careful, these transistors can sometimes come in the same package. Be sure to check the data sheet before you put them in use. Smaller transistors like these, which normally handle less power, are normally called signal transistors. Whereas more powerful than these, with you know a heat sink to dissipate the extra heat, are normally known as power transistors. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check out our other videos and feel free to like, comment and subscribe.